Real quick, we'll get the satellite coordinates out uh, for this presser. The format is 1080i, the MPEGs 4. 420 data rate is 11.914. The symbol is 7.2. The FEC is 5 over 6. DVB dash S2 QPSK. Uh, we're now being joined, or momentarily, we will be joined by the head coach of the St. Bonaventure Bonnies, Mark Schmidt, as well as uh, Jalen Adams and Courtney Stockard. Uh, just a couple things before we start. We just ask that you please silence your cell phones, other mobile devices. There's no flash photography or video recording allowed during the press conference, but the AV sites are across the hall, back into the left, straight across the tunnel. Uh, when asking a question for our student athletes, raise your hand, bring the mic around, identify yourself by name and affiliation, and just please address your question to a specific student athlete. And then the format will have uh, Coach Schmidt give an opening statement first. We'll open the floor for questions for our student athletes. Only we'll dismiss them and we'll open the floor for questions for Coach Schmidt. Mark, if you'd like, you can start with an opening statement. Well, what a game. Um, you know, we got great tradition at Bonaventure. Um, you know, we, we, we heard, um, you know, all week. And, you know, when I got the, the job here 11 years ago, you know, you hear those stories about 1970 and how disappointing it was that, you know, Lanier got hurt and um, they didn't have a chance to, to have a full team and going to, to play um, Jacksonville and, you know, everybody talks about if Lanier was healthy, um, they would have taken on UCLA. And, you know, it's – this victory is for those guys that didn't get an opportunity to uh, to show their talent. Um, just really proud of our guys. You know, they played extremely, extremely hard. Uh, this guy next to me was a, a huge part of it. Um, just proud of our effort. You know, uh, I'm thankful for the Dayton fans for, for what they did. Um, you know, I said in the press conference yesterday, it'll be the first time that they didn't boo me, boo the Bonnies. They, they were, it felt like the rally center, um, you know, all over again. You know, we had great support from the Bonaventure people that came down, great support from the community of, of Dayton, um, and we just beat UCLA. Um, how much prouder can I be? Questions for our student athletes only, right here in the front left. Uh, Court, Joe Serralo, The Bonaventure. You've waited over two years for this. Now going out there, biggest game of your career, and really leading the team when other offensive performances weren't quite where they wanted to be. What does that mean for you in this in this spotlight? Um, well, without this guy right here next to me, it wouldn't have even been possible. I mean, they, they kind of keyed in on them <clears throat> early in the game, and we, we, we really knew they would. Um, I got some good looks early. Um, Jay did a good job of finding me. And, I'm thankful for that. Here on the left. Courtney, you, um, it was a thought you could play against Davidson, and obviously you sat out. How did you feel physically tonight? Um, I still wasn't 100% yet, but I, I'm, I'm feeling way better than, than when I did when I left the Richmond game. So I can't really let the opportunity like this pass. So I'm just, I'm just out here playing. You go here in the aisle and on the left. Uh, Jalen, kind of, kind of a two-part question. Um, when's the last time you had a game like this for 39 minutes, if you ever have? And what I noticed the first bit of frustration on your face after you missed the drive around the seven or eight-minute mark. And what, what kept you going down the stretch? Um, I, first of all, it was a great game. Um, Got to be a part of it. Uh, you know, going in, I missed some shots early um, that I thought was supposed to drop. Um, I, tried, I hung my head a little bit, but my teammates just picked me back up. My coaches just told me keep playing, and it's it's all up. To, this guy right here he played so well. He picked us up. He picked the whole team up. We rallied behind him, um, and the win wouldn't have been possible without him. We're here on the left, Cordy. When the game started, it looked like you guys were a little bit jittery. Well, it looked like everybody else was a little bit jittery, but you weren't. Why do you think you were so calm? It's, it just seemed like you were on some sort of a, a mission. You were just, you know, in the way that you attacked the basket. Well, I think it, is, it goes back to me sitting out that Davidson game. Um, I was really disappointed with the injury that I came down with. And um, coming out today, I wanted to be aggressive, especially knowing that they were going to key in on Jay and Matt. And, um, and doing that, I, I helped us get a win. And uh, shouts out to my teammates. 
go front row here on the right. Jay, um, you went straight to your mother after the game, gave her a hug after helping Bonnet to his first NCAA tournament win in 48 years. You were the driving force, you know, behind this thing. What did that feel like for you? Uh, it's just a real feeling, man. Um, all my friends, they used to tell me how, uh, how, how, how crazy of an experience the um, NCAA tournament is. And it's a whole nother feeling when you get a win, uh, especially when you get those facts behind you. Uh, coach let us know that, that teams win games out of date, and especially when you win here. So <laughs> she's my biggest supporter. I just wanted to go show her love and, and thank her for, you know, supporting me. Front right here on the aisle. Uh, this is for Jalen and Courtney. UCLA came out and they couldn't miss at the beginning of the game. They were making everything, threes, twos, were five, five at one point. How'd you guys just kind of like handle that pressure and come back and go on a run? Jalen, can you answer that first? Uh, we understood they were going to make shots. They're a good offensive team. Um, they have a bunch of skilled guys, one through five. Uh, I think it's just credit to the coaching and the veteran leadership that we didn't hang our head when they started making shots, and we understood it's a, it's a game of runs. So we knew what, we would have our turn, and we punched back, and I'm glad we can get the win today. Courtney? Um, just to <clears throat> kind of piggyback off what Jay said, um, they're a good offensive team, but at the end of the day, it's a 40-minute game. Um, can't hang our heads on the shots they hit early. We just wanted to keep our defensive principles and, and try to get stops. Back left, Tim. Yeah, but Jalen, specifically, that uh, what 18, 16, 18-footer you hit put you guys ahead. I mean, what what did you see there? What did it feel like? What felt different, you know, than uh, some of those earlier shots? Uh, early on, I just felt like the lane was real crowded. Um, late in the game, I felt like it, I had a little space. Uh, nobody came and set the ball screen, so I knew they just wanted me to work out. Um, the defense kept backing up, and I was able to knock the shot down. Credit to my teammates just for, for uh, keeping my confidence up um, throughout the whole game. And I just want to be that guy to make, make plays down the stretch for my team, and, and I'm glad I could make that shot. Time for a couple more. Go here on the left, front right. Go ahead, yeah. Jay. Yep. Jay, <clears throat> you were two for 16 from the floor. How, how good of a sign is this when you go two of 16 from the floor and you take down that team? It just, it just shows what kind of team we could be. Um, we understood that the game was going to be won on the defensive end. Um, Credit, credit UCLA defense. Um, I couldn't couldn't hit shots early. I uh, couldn't get in the rhythm. Um, you know, a lot of nerves going out there into that first game, and I'm glad we can get them out the way. So I look forward to to, to Thursday. Last one here in the front. Courtney, because you uh, played in that Maryland game, obviously earlier in the year, it looked like you guys employed sort of the same defensive strategy in this one tonight against a bigger UCLA team. Was that the case? And um, just how about the effort for you guys to hold one of the you know, highest scoring teams in the country at 80 some points a game to 58. I mean, <clears throat> we kind of we kind of play like the same defense with not not just them, but we played that same defense all year. Um, like you said, UCLA is a, a, a good offensive team, um, high scoring team. But on um, the guys, <clears throat> we did. I think we did a good job of uh, taking away their knowns, making them uh, get take. Uh, contested shots and just a credit to the rest of the team. Courtney and Jalen, thank you for your time. Good luck in the round of 64. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll open the floor for questions for Coach Schmidt. Right here in the front right, or left. Uh, Coach, you always talk about limiting your turnovers to less than 10 every game. You had six tonight, you forced 20. Can you talk about the defensive yeah, aggressiveness? That, that, you know, you, you look at, you know, and I always talk about the, the um, five columns in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, and you want to, you know, if you can win, you know, those columns, you have a chance to win. And, you know, we scored 30 points off of turnovers. They score three. We outscored them by 27. That's the difference. You know, our zone was really effective. Our guys did a really good job of getting out on holiday, um, you know, keeping the ball in front of us. They were really active. And that's, you know, our half-court offense wasn't great. They have great size. Um, but we got stuff off of turnovers, and that was, that was a huge key, 30, 30 points. Um, you know, plus 27 points off turnovers, that's, that's the difference. And, you know, as big as they were, you know, we outscored them by 10 in the paint. You know, so those two categories. Going into the game, you're always concerned. You know, they were so fast. They advanced the ball. They're big. They have great skill. Um, but our zone, and you never going into the game, you have your game plan, but you just don't know. 
you know, how effective, you know, the zone's going to be. And it, it was effective. Um, you know, we were active in it. Um, and, you know, UCLA is a heck of a team with great talent. Um, but, you know, we were active, got deflections and, you know, points off turnovers. That, that was the difference in the game. Slow starts for Jay and, and Matt, and here Courtney is playing hurt. And just talk a little bit about what it, how important you know, it was so, for him to carry carry you guys. Oh around. yeah, it's you know we didn't have him against uh, Davidson, and you know Courtney had been averaging I think 24 points in the last four games, and you know give a credit credit to him. You know for two years he didn't play you know one second of basketball, and for him to come back and have a day like today, uh, it's a credit to him. But he's the reason why we won. You know, he, could, he scored the ball, Jay and Matt. You know, UCLA did a really good job on those guys, and they freed up, um, you know, Courtney. And we thought, you know, going into the game with the size that UCLA, we thought that Courtney could do some stuff off the bounce. That was going to be, we thought, the mismatch. Um, and Courtney made some plays and got some stuff in the open court. Um, and, but like I said, the difference was, you know, the points off turnovers. You know, be able to outscore um, UCLA, by, UCLA by 27. Uh, with the talent that they have, that's that's a credit to our guys. We're here, right? Mark, you mentioned it off the top, but when did the history of this matchup in the 1970 thing kind of hit, hit home for you? You know, it's – you know, when, when we found out we were playing UCLA, and I had known about it, you know, when I first got the job, but when we first got to know that we were going to play UCLA, you know, it's – Everybody who talks about it, and you know, it, it, Bonaventure is a unique place. It's a special place, and it's got great basketball tradition. Uh, and that was the greatest team that's ever played. Um, and so they talked about that, and um, and, and you know, I talked to the team about it, you know, because I think that that's really important. You know, legacies and tradition, um, and, and for our guys to be able to go out and, and play a great UCLA team and beat them, you know, to me, that's you know, hopefully that helps the disappointment. Um, back in 1970. You hear any aisle? Mark, in all the years that, that you've had uh, Jalen, yeah. have you seen a game from him like that where he might not have it for at least shooting? Yeah, he struggled. He struggled shooting-wise. You know, I thought he did a really good job uh, defending, did a good job handling the ball. He, he struggled. But it's, you know, I've always said it. You know, going into the season, they talked about our two guards, and our two guards are really good, Matt and Jay. But this, this is basketball is a, a five-man game, and, and you need other guys. Um, and we're not, we're not a team that just relies on those two guys, and it shows today when, when our best player can have a, a, an offensive performance like he had and we, we can beat a UCLA team. Uh, that's a credit to the other guys, those role guys. Um, and that's how you win um, basketball games. It's, you know, your, your stars have to play well, but your role guys have to – they, they, they got to pick it up and, and, and play well and fill those roles. And they did a, you know, Courtney did a extremely good job today. We, like I said, we wouldn't have won without him. Go front right. Got time for two more, then we'll go here on the left. Coach, I know you said in your press conference yesterday that you guys would wait until after the season to sort of reflect on your accomplishments from this yep. year. But um, to have led this program to its first NCAA tournament win in 48 years, how does that feel right now? It's great. You know, and it's it's a credit to everybody at, at the university. You know, from from the administration to the athletic department um, to our players. It, it's you know, I'm proud. I'm, I'm proud to be the head coach at St. Bonaventure. I'm proud of the uh, of our team and the accomplish, accomplishments that they've had. But we're not done. You know, we, we can we can look at all those records that we've had. You know, once this is finished, um, and we know we're, we're having a heck of a year. Um, but we want to continue, and that 2 a.m. flight's going to be the best flight I've ever taken. Last one here on the left. Hey Mark, yeah. did it take you a couple minutes to gather yourself before you walked in here? Like yeah. I, I saw tears when you came in there, which I've never seen from you. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a special moment to, to you know, where, where we came 11 years ago, um, you know, when, when I walked into a, a locker room, we had three players. Um, they had won 24 games in, in four years. Um, you know, some people told me I shouldn't take the job. And, um, you know, for, for us to go from having three players to beating UCLA um, in 11 years, that, that, that's something I'm really proud of. And, and believe me, I, I, it's not me. It's, you know, I get great assistants, great players, and, and kids that, that really strive to, to, to be good. You know, our, our guys, you know, we always talk about we're, we're, we're a bunch of misfits. You know, no one wanted us. Um, we come to Bonaventure and we just work our tails off. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good that, you know, when you work, to have some success. And that, that's, that's what I'm most proud of. And, and yeah, it, it is emotional.
because we know how much we've put into this. Mark, thank you. Good luck against Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Zach? Yes, how you doing? Now being joined by the head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Steve Alford, as well as student athletes, Aaron Holiday and Tom Welch. Uh, Steve, if you'd like, uh, you can start with an opening statement. Well, um, um, great job by Mark and, and his staff. Uh, we haven't been uh, held down like that offensively very often for two teams that kind of um, had a season where offense was probably their strength. Uh, it became a, a defensive game. And uh, I thought we were really good defensively. I thought we did the things we wanted to do to Mobley and, uh, and Adams, two really good players. And um, so I think that really gave ourselves a chance. We just had too many turnovers. We're not a, we've been a team over the last month that's really handled the ball well. And uh, we had a lot of live ball errant passes today that you know, I think the, the difference in the game was 30 to 3 in turnovers. And um, that's hard to overcome, especially in an NCAA game when uh, you give up that many points. Uh, and it takes that away from your offense. We had um, 10 fewer shots. And most games this year, we were getting more shots than our opponents. So um, credit their defense, but we were very uncharacteristic with our offense. And um, But I'm, pr I'm proud of these guys, these two to my right have meant so much to our program and our culture. Um, you get to see what kind of players they are. Uh, they're better people. Uh, they're better young men. And that says a lot because they're terrific, great players. Um, and I really appreciate what they've given to this program, both on the floor, off the floor, and in the classroom. They've been first class in everything that we've asked for them. So unfortunately, March, there's a finality to it. And we've reached our finality today. But uh, these two will, will end up having uh, great careers beyond college, and um, and they'll go on to be highly successful just because of the people that they are. And I really appreciate what they've meant to our program. Questions for Tom and Aaron, right here in the left. Or we go right first. Oh, uh, I actually had a question for Steve. Uh, uh, just the players right now. Okay, uh, Aaron or Thomas, uh, the turnovers uh, again. As Steve mentioned, very uncharacteristic. You guys, was it a focus issue? Was it something uh, the Bonnies were doing? What do you uh, attribute those to? Well, we just came out, and obviously they're a lot longer than you think. They're they're a small team, but they they guard pretty well, and they use their length to their advantage. So some most of the passes I threw, I threw up, and they were able to recover. They closed gaps pretty quick. So yeah, that's pretty much it. They're they're pretty long, and they got deflections. Back left, Tim. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, down down there near the end, did did uh, I don't know did. Did you lose your cool a little bit? I mean, the elbows up and stuff. I mean, just what was kind of going on there in those frenetic moments? Well, they were grabbing me, so I used my arm to get them off of me. Front left here. Uh, Aaron, can you talk about working out with Jay last year for the Atlanta Hawks? Uh, essentially, you shut him down tonight, just two for 16 from the field. How did uh, seeing him in the past help you in guarding him tonight? Uh, we didn't really do that much within the workout to where I could see what he really can do. But I watch film on him. Uh, I watch a couple games on him, and I just try to study and see what his tendencies are. Right here on the right. Thomas, like Aaron said, they were they were long, even though they weren't that tall. Did, did you guys have trouble with the quickness of their zone, especially in the first half? 
Yeah, I think they did a, they did a great job of uh, helping and recovering and, and, and stealing balls when we passed it out. But, um, yeah, you just got to give a lot of credit to them because they made a lot of great plays and forced us into some bad turnovers. So, yeah, they uh, played really well tonight. Here on the right, on the end. Yeah, Aaron Thomas, were either one of you surprised by their intensity and were you able to match, do you think, do you, do you fail to match their intensity at some points during the game? Thomas? No, I don't think, well, personally, I wasn't surprised by it. I mean, it's it's March, it's, it's the tournament, and of course, I mean, this, like Coach was saying before, there's a finality to it, so um, we lose, now we're out, and, and of course, every team knows that going in, so they want to give it their best shot, give it their best effort, and I think, yeah, you just have to expect that going in, you have to try to match that and do, do the same. Aaron? Um, we obviously knew that coming into the game. Uh, they finished second in their A-10 league, so that's not easy to do in any league. And we, we knew how tough they were going to be. Uh, I felt like we matched them pretty well. We just turned the ball over too much. Any further questions for our student athletes? All right, Aaron and Thomas, thank you for your time. Congratulations on your season. Uh, now questions for Coach Alford. Aaron Wright. Steve, how much, how effective do you think uh, their zone was? You touched on that earlier, but in terms of the, the Well, they did. Disruption you got to give them credit. They did a very good job with it because I think we had an eight, ten point lead out of the gate um, with them playing man. And you know, we knew that they'd played zone. Uh, they'd been 85, about 85% man, 15% zone all year. Um, we got the flip of that today. Um, but when it worked, uh, they were able to just stay with it, and I think that's where the first half it really cost us because we, we gave their zone more momentum uh, because of our inability in the first half. I think we had 11 turnovers in the first half and maybe nine in the second, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, 20 turnovers and 10 less shots, and uh, that's why I know our defense was pretty good because they got 30 points off our turnovers, which is our offense. Uh, so our defense, I thought – uh, we did a lot of good things in half-court defense, which is encouraging. Uh, I think these guys have grown and matured a lot. But um, for whatever reason, we just couldn't get in rhythm offensively. I thought we got into forcing things. And, um, you know, we tried dribbling through two and three people or passing through two or three people. Just very uncharacteristic. We tried to get the ball inside, and we weren't able to do that. Um, I thought in the second half we moved much better, uh, and the ball moved a lot better. And we had a tie game with a minute minute 10 to go and you know Adams who I thought we did a really good job made a made a big shot you know I think he was probably one for 15 at the time and that that takes some some nerve uh with a minute to go in a game so credit to him makes a huge shot and then I don't know if we got a shot up after that I think um I think in the last minute we turned it over two or three times and so it really came down to that last minute and we just didn't execute very well front left uh, Coach, most teams, when they get ready for St. Bonaventure, they prep mainly on Adams and Mobley. How did Stockard's play catch you maybe by surprise tonight, considering he had just missed an important game with a hamstring injury? Yeah, no surprise. I mean, you gotta you got to pick your poison. And you you got Adams and Mobley, who have consistently averaged 40 points. And Stockard had been somebody who's really been averaging about 10 and 11 all year long. In the last four games, I think he was averaging 23. Uh, so he was in rhythm. Then he messes the last game – uh, I think to a hamstring maybe, uh, so we knew he'd probably be back, but you got to give him credit. He played really well, um, and that's a tough matchup. But um, we knew those were their three big scores, and uh, two of those threes, we two of the three guys who pretty much eliminated, not eliminated, but well, well below their averages. So that's why I say defensively we gave ourselves a chance. Um, you just it's hard, especially in a tournament setting, uh, if you're going to turn the ball over 20 times. Um, that's putting a lot of pressure uh, on your offense and your defense. I think our defense responded, but when you when you miss 20 opportunities to shoot the ball, uh, it's going to affect your offense. Aaron Wright. You know, it would be hard to ask Aaron to do any more than he did. Absolutely. You think, you think this is a case of, you know, being well, too dependent on well, what he does? Well, we've asked a lot. I mean, that's that's what we're down to. And, you know, we had to ask a lot out of him. We had to ask a lot out of Tom. Um, we didn't have that depth, and they've just been terrific all year. Uh, and Aaron's been terrific 
uh, all year. And you saw that again tonight. You know, here, here's another example of what we expect him to do. But, oh, yeah, by the way, he guards the other team's best player. Uh, and that happened again tonight. And I don't know if Adams has had a worse shooting night all year long. Um, so, again, Aaron, yeah, 10 turnovers, uncharacteristic out of him. Um, but it's not because of, of his effort and um, what we've asked out of him, the way he's defended this year, the players, the best guard on the other player's team has been tremendous. His leadership's been great. Um, we just couldn't really get in rhythm, him or anybody else offensively. Turn to right, Bill. Steve, is it hard for you to see their, both their college careers end like this? Yeah, no, that's the hard, I think it's one of the hardest things in, in coaching uh, because, you know, Tom's been with me four years. Aaron, you know, we'll wait and see. But um, in my opinion, he's a, a first-round pick. And, you know, so he's got some decisions to make. But Gigi's been with us for four, Ike three, Alec Wolf four. You know, these have got a couple managers in our locker room right now that have been with us four years. You know, that finality, that's what we talk about all the time. March is exciting. March is, you know, everybody wants to get here and you fight like crazy for five months to get it done. And But there's a finality to it because you're only promised one game. And so it all hits you very quickly. Uh, and I'm sure we'll think back here over the next several days of what they've meant to our program. But without even thinking that this senior class has meant so much to us. Um, you know, they're, they're all going to graduate on time. Uh, managers are going to graduate on time. It's just been a, a special group that have uh, helped build the culture that we wanted to build on the floor, off the floor, in the classroom. Um, and I just appreciate their efforts so much. So um, it hurts. It stings. It'll, it'll sting even more. And, and I've done it enough now 27 times that, you know, that, that finality when you don't get to coach that group again and you don't get to coach that group of young men. Uh, that stings. It hurts uh, because uh, not just over the last five or six months, but over the last four years, a lot of these guys, you've been in the weight room with them. You've been, you know, out on the track with them. You've been uh, doing individual workouts with them. You've been in film sessions. Um, and now, you know, that comes to an end very quickly. Got time for one more. Sure. Last one from Bill. Even maybe your younger players, this is the first time you've been in the playing game. They didn't take it as serious, the whole play. You know, they thought, well, this wasn't the real tournament. Is there any chance any no, players no, I don't, thought that at all? No, I don't think so. Uh, they know this is the tournament. Um, they, they just know it was our seeding. You know, you get an 11 seed and you get, you got to play your first game in Dayton. Uh, and it happens quick. You know, you don't get to play on a Thursday or Friday. You got to play on a Tuesday. And so um, that's the – that's probably the toughest part you know about the play-in situation is that um, selection Sunday uh, selection is on Sunday you find out four o'clock who you're playing three o'clock who you're playing and uh, you know, instead of having two or three days to prepare and have the excitement of the NCAA tournament it just you're on a plane the next morning and you're playing the next day and so that's the hard part it's the first time I've been in it and I would say that's the most difficult part is that your team just doesn't get to enjoy that you know that the excitement of being in the NCAA tournament. So that's obviously why the importance of tonight was. But, you know, they had a very serious approach. Um, you know, our practices were great. Um, we, you obviously don't have a lot of them, but our film sessions, everything, they were they were point on. And, and I know that just from the effort that they gave defensively. Um, now we've got some young players that, you know, I hope that they've learned a lot of watching Aaron and watching Tom, watching Gigi. Um, we've got a lot of young players that have to have really good off seasons because I think they're very talented. Uh, but there was a lot of growth that took place this year. And now that maturity has to happen when you go from freshman to sophomore. Uh, I think this is a group that's got to really mature over the summer um, and do the things they got to do to get better. Steve, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.